This is Body Fat Reduction Seminar. Make sure you're in the right place. Uh, let's start by seeing the hands of all the people who are trying to lose weight. You're trying to lose weight, let me see the hands. Okay? All right. That's the wrong answer. Put your hands down. <laughs> even, even my own clients raise their hands. Okay, we're, we're, we're never trying to lose weight. Losing weight is not the goal. Body fat reduction is the goal, which is why this is titled Body Fat Reduction Seminar. If we try to lose weight, then our focus is on the wrong thing. Losing weight can be healthy, but it doesn't necessarily have to be healthy. Whereas when you reduce body fat, that's always healthy. So we want to focus on reducing body fat, and as the body fat reduces, we're going to weigh less. So weight loss will, will achieve that indirectly, but that's not the focus. All right, uh, through the course of my lecture, I'm going to use a number of terms that you're probably familiar with and you've heard, but just to make sure that you understand them in the full context in which I'm going to be using them, I uh, want to do a quick terminology review. First word that I want to define is metabolism. Who can define metabolism for me? The rate that your body burns energy. The rate your body burns energy, okay? That's a good working definition. We'll go with that. The rate at which your body burns energy. Everybody's familiar with that. All right, so to be healthy and fit, do we want to have a fast or a slow metabolism? Correct, fast metabolism. Most people tend to believe that metabolism is some curse that they inherited from their parents. All right? Hey, my parents are heavy, I am too, and that's just the way it's going to be. The truth is that genes do play a role in metabolism, but it's only a small role. And for the most part, we are uh, fully empowered to control our metabolisms and speed them up as much as we want to. It's just a matter of knowing how to go about doing it, which is what we're going to learn here this morning. Okay? So if you have a slow metabolism, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know and give you the tools to speed that metabolism up. Because when you have a fast metabolism, well, that's when you burn more fat, and that's ultimately what we want to do. All right, next word that we want to define, simple word, muscle. Muscle is the lean, healthy tissue of the body. Fat would be the non-lean, non-healthy tissue, all right? But muscle is the lean, healthy tissue. Muscle is the tissue that burns calories, all right? So if we've already defined metabolism, as the rate at which your body burns energy. Energy is calories. And if muscle is the tissue of your body that burns energy, burns calories, then to have a faster metabolism, would we want to have more or less muscle? More muscle, correct. Now, I bring this up because it is common to see people join a gym and use this rationale. It seems to make perfect sense. They say, well, I'm trying to lose weight. They don't say I'm trying to reduce body fat. I'm trying to lose weight. And since I want to lose weight, the focus of my training is going to be on the cardiovascular machines. Because I don't want to lift weights, that's going to make me gain weight. I'm going to build bigger muscles, I'm going to gain weight. And I don't want to gain weight. But of course, that thinking isn't right because we need to build muscle. Muscle burns calories. The more muscle that we build, the more calories we burn, the faster our metabolism, and ultimately the leaner that we are, okay? So in order to be healthy and fit and to have better metabolisms, we have to build muscle. So, so it's important to understand from day one that building muscle has got to be an essential part of one's um, fitness endeavor. Okay? Next term I want to define is blood sugar. Blood sugar feeds the brain. Your brain functions based on being fed blood sugar. When your blood sugar is low, then the brain's not being fed properly and you don't think as fast and you, you don't do anything as good. All right? But more importantly, we want to define blood sugar as your body's primary Indicator, primary indicator of everything that goes on inside you. Your body monitors your blood sugar level 24 hours a day. And your body seeks to maintain 
stable and steady and level blood sugar levels, okay? When that blood sugar is stable like that, your body functions optimally. When the blood sugar goes high or low, that messes things up. Throws us into a state of what we will call metabolic chaos. We're going to come back to that in a few minutes. But just to understand the function of blood sugar, your blood sugar is what tells your body what's going on inside of you, primary indicator, and your body functions best when that blood sugar is, is steady and stable. Okay? The last word I want to define, and we'll go and get started, is, and this word not everybody's always familiar with, is synergy. S-Y-N-E-R-G-Y. Now, is there anybody who's, who's never heard the word before? Synergy. Okay. Because I'm going to uh, illustrate with an example that'll make it easy to understand, okay? Uh, the definition is, it's the, it's the way in which different elements work together to produce an effect that is greater than the sum of those elements, okay? And here's a simple example, easy to understand. Let's say you've got three objects. One is a car. One is a big tank of gas. And one is a set of car keys. Three separate things. Now, any one of those things by itself will get you how far? No. Any two of those things in combination will get you how far? Nowhere. Unless you push the car. <laughs> but if you put the gas in the car and put the keys in the car and start up, well, you can drive to wherever you want to go, right? So those three elements work together synergistically to produce a much greater effect than any one of those things could produce by itself, all right? Fitness works the same way. And you have got to understand this concept if you're ever going to improve and, uh, and make achievements with your fitness routines, okay? Uh, in order to have a fitness routine that is going to produce physical benefits and improve your health, you have got to combine three necessary elements that will work together synergistically. Number one is proper nutrition. If your body is not being fed properly, it will never improve. Your body requires very certain and, and specific nutrients in order to improve. Uh, number two, resistance training, which is re responsible for building muscle. We already talked about the role of muscle and how we want to build it to improve the metabolism. Number three is cardiovascular exercise. Once we've got these bigger muscles, they can then burn a lot more calories by doing cardiovascular exercise, which you know raises the heart rate on it. Now, what is common is that people who neglect the nutrition and the resistance training and just do the cardio. In fact, I hear this every day, and it makes me cringe, but I hear it all the time. People say, I bet you some of y'all have said this before, too. They say, um, you know, as long as I work out, I can eat whatever I want. You said that? The thing you have to understand about cardiovascular exercise is when you're on that machine and doing it and you have your heart rate up and you're working, it's sort of like being in your car and stepping on the gas pedal. Now, as long as you've got your foot on the gas pedal, your car's burning more gas. But as soon as you take it off, well, it's not. Well, as soon as you get off that machine, then the whole calorie burning process goes right back to normal and you're not burning more. However, when you do resistance training and build larger muscles, that effect is full time. Once you've got the larger muscles, you're burning more calories 24 hours a day, even while you're sleeping, even while you're watching TV, even while you're sitting here listening to me. We mentioned earlier that the body functions optimally when the blood sugar levels are stable and steady, um, and that when the blood sugar is high or low, that sort of messes things up. So let's start off talking about low blood sugar. Who can tell me what we do to put ourselves into a state of low blood sugar? How do you get low blood sugar? Don't eat right. How about just don't eat? When you eat food, and the food goes into your digestive system, your body starts to break it down to utilize it for, for various purposes. And one of the things that your body's gonna do with some of that food is it's gonna convert it into blood sugar. Your body then generates blood sugar to keep those blood sugar levels steady.